In this week's abbreviated holiday video, we'll review the 12 charts of Christmas to see what we can learn. We'll be moving quickly, so feel free to use the pause button on your video player. Chart number one. A daily chart of the S&P 500 with some simple moving averages, the 50 day in blue all the way out to the 200 day simple moving average in orange. This is the look of the chart the day before Thanksgiving, Wednesday, November 24th. Market was closed on Thursday, November 25th for Thanksgiving. And as you may remember, we had the big scare on Black Friday, November 26th related to the new strain of the virus. And there were concerns in the market relative to the effectiveness or possible effectiveness of the existing vaccines against the new strain. And since there were concerns on Black Friday that the market might morph into a 2020 type incident again, in terms of trading the chart in front of us, it might be helpful to step forward and see how the market reacted to the COVID incident in 2020 relative to the reaction that we had in 2021. Thus, if we consider February 19th of 2020 and November 24th of 2021 to be day zero, if we walk forward five calendar days, there's more fear here, but this is still somewhat of a concerning look on the right side of your screen from a price perspective. Nine calendar days later, this is very, very concerning. This is our hot knife through butter look where the market is basically saying, Everything that you thought you knew about this strong trend is now in jeopardy and the market has decided that it has missed something in here and is correcting very, very quickly. This is concerning here, but not nearly as concerning. Here we've given up the 200 day moving average in orange. Here we're still well above an upward sloping 200 day. However, this is concerning here and is telling us nine days in to pay closer attention. Here's where the cases start to diverge. 16 days in, over here on the left side of the screen, which would be March 6th of 2020, we had tried to recapture the 200 day in orange here and failed to do that. This is a concerning look here on March 6th and really looks nothing like 16 calendar days later on December 10th in 2021, where you're printing a new all-time closing high. Here, you're back to a full bore bullish look with price above all of the moving averages, blue the fastest moving average on top, and the slopes of all of the moving averages are up. And if we move forward to calendar day 29, which would be December 23rd, it's a look of the chart intraday once again, flirting with new all-time highs. This is in stark contrast to 29 days forward from February 19th of 2020. So from here to here, the market is starting to assess really any topic related to the virus. And you can see as more information became available, those assessments turned out to be significantly different and almost polar opposites with price down here at day 29 on the left side of the screen on March 19th of 2020 and flirting with a new high intraday on December 23rd, 2021. Moving on to chart number two. This time we'll be examining a monthly chart of the S&P 500. You may remember we covered this chart here in detail on Black Friday, November 26th, after that big one day plunge, the worst Black Friday on record in the US stock market. You might remember this is the strong trend look that we wanted to try to maintain. These were the concerning rollover looks here. How does the exact same chart look on December 23rd. Does it look more like this, or more like this, or this? Despite all of the volatility and the zigs and zags that have taken place in the stock market between Black Friday and December 23rd, you can see we still have a full bore bullish look on December 23rd with price above an upward sloping 10 month moving average in blue and well above an upward sloping 40 month moving average in red. Chart number three. This is the VIX late in the session on December 23rd. You can see a big spike here. This is the COVID fear spike in 2021. It's quite a bit shallower than the fear spike that we experienced in 2020 over here on the left side of the screen. The more important thing is once the VIX started to rise over here from mid-February of 2020, you can see for the most part, it continued to make a series of higher highs. 
If we swing over to the right side of the chart, that's not the case. Fear or volatility expectations peaked in late November. And during the session on December 23rd, we were back below 20, trading at 1779. And if we put some moving averages on this chart, you can see the big COVID spike in fear here in 2020. See how the moving average is somewhat of a tight cluster and it breaks to the upside? You can make an argument right now, this looks like a false fear breakout. And now we're below all of the moving averages. The however that's coming, this is still somewhat of an indecisive look here. And our analysis of this chart would change significantly if the VIX goes on and prints a higher high, let's say above 32 in the coming days and weeks. But we trade the chart in front of us right now. This looks quite a bit better over here relative to this look over here. Chart number four. We've all heard the narrative, if interest rates are rising and inflation is high, the last place you wanna be is in tech stocks. We look at XLK relative to SPY. The last important thing this chart did was make a new all-time high earlier in December. And right now the ratio of XLK to SPY is maintaining a full bore bullish look, including the orange 200 day moving average flattening out and trying to turn back up. No question, there's some indecisiveness here, but the longer term trend favors XLK over SPY, and it looks like it's trying to resume that trend based on the chart in front of us. Chart number five. Similar situation here, growth versus value, SCHG relative to VTV. The longer term trend, especially if we go out to a monthly chart, still favors growth over value. Somewhat of an indecisive look here, but again, we've got the 200 day moving average rolling over, flattening out, but now trying to turn back up. Not a confidence inspiring look, but a look that still favors growth over value. This ratio is based on ETFs. If we look at the Citigroup growth index relative to the Citigroup value index, here are the symbols up here in the left hand corner of your screen. It's a little more convincing in favor of growth relative to value. Chart number six. Sometimes it can be constructive if we look at charts and then flip them over. It's a little bit easier to see that value is struggling relative to the market here when we look at VTV relative to SPY. Had a nice period of strength here between September and let's say May of this year, but since then value has been underperforming and on the 23rd, it was below all of the moving averages. Blue, the fastest moving average was on the bottom. Orange, the slowest moving average was on the top and the slopes of all of the moving averages were down. This consolidation says we should be open to a resumption of this trend reversal attempt here, but we have to see a lot more than we've seen thus far. Chart number seven. Covered this chart many times in the past. This is energy XLE relative to SPY. You may hear a lot at the end of the year that energy was the number one performing sector in calendar year 2021, and that is true. However, all of that outperformance came between January 1st and very, very early in February of 2021. If you purchased XLE over SPY from this point here where my cursor is, XLE has actually underperformed for several months now. No question, another indecisive look chart here. We'll learn something if we break out to the upside or come back down into this area here. The main takeaway for this chart right now is interest rate expectations in terms of the long-term view were really higher here in Q1 of this year relative to where we are in December can draw a downward sloping trend line here, at least if we do it point to point. Chart number eight. Very, very similar message here. If the market thought that interest rates were going to rise for several years, you would think that financials would be performing better relative to the S&P 500 over the past several months. They've been underperforming since late May or early June. Still have this somewhat of a tight cluster look here, so this can change quickly. But right now, this is somewhat of a tepid look, financials relative to the market. 
Chart number nine, stocks versus bonds, markets when they get extended from the 200 day moving average or any moving average, they tend to consolidate and come back to that moving average. During a bullish trend, when you get extended as we were in Q1, sometimes that resolves itself by moving sideways rather than correcting to the downside. Right now, it looks like we've moved sideways, allowing an upward sloping orange 200 day moving average to catch up. Very indecisive look here, but for now, we have to give this trend, this uptrend favoring stocks the benefit of the doubt until proven otherwise. And if we zoom in, we've been talking about indecisiveness in these videos for quite some time. You can see it really starts here on this chart in late April of this year. All of this consolidation for the most part takes place near or under this blue line. That's changed here. For the most part, the ratio has spent more time above this blue line in recent months. And we're still above an upward sloping 200 day. In trend following, you always give the existing trend the benefit of the doubt until proven otherwise. A pay closer attention look, oh yes. A trend reversal look, not yet. Chart number 10. If you look closely, you can see the seahorse formation over here where my cursor is. This is defensive staples, XLP relative to SPY. Here's the COVID fear spike here. Quite a bit sharper, a lot more fear here than this relatively muted look here. This is another pay closer attention look, but we don't have a trend reversal yet. Chart number 11. A very broad and generic rule of thumb. When you're looking at any instrument, ETF, stock, bond, anything that produces an annual yield, if the yield is higher, especially significantly higher than the yield on a 10 year treasury, it speaks to increasing risk. Leverage loans, AKA lower rated or riskier loans, credit markets really don't seem that concerned here. Compare and contrast the look over here in recent weeks relative to this lower high here in February of 2020 and then this big plunge. And that brings us to the 12th chart of Christmas. We've covered this chart many times in recent weeks and it speaks for itself. NASDAQ composite weekly with Bollinger Bands here and the relative strength index affectionately known as RSI on the bottom. This would be the type of look with RSI that we would like to avoid. This is the type of look we would like to avoid. This is your Bollinger Band look here that we would like to avoid. Want to avoid something like this as well. Thus far, despite the volatility that we've had in the markets in recent weeks, we've held above these dotted lines here where my cursor is. And for the most part, we've avoided that more concerning look thus far with the Bollinger Bands. As of December 23rd at the close, the NASDAQ was up 3.19% for the week. And that goes into the history books because Thursday was the last trading day of the week. As always, the commentary about this chart and any chart that we've covered in this week's video is based on the chart in front of us. If the facts change, if the look of the charts change, then we have to be willing to reassess the probabilities. And we all know the only way that we can do that effectively is if we head into next week and every week with that flexible, unbiased, and open mind. The material in this video has no regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs of any viewer. This video is presented solely for informational purposes and is not to be construed as a solicitation or an offer to buy or sell any securities or any related financial instruments, nor should any of its content be taken as investment advice. Any opinions expressed in this video are subject to change without notice, and Shivako Capital Management, LLC, or CCM, is not under any obligation to update or keep current the information contained herein. CCM and its respective officers and associates, or clients, may have an interest in the securities or derivatives of any entities referred to in this material. CCM accepts no liability whatsoever for any loss or damage of any kind arising out of the use of all or any part of this material. 
We recommend that you consult with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision.